Today, we have an incredible new robot out of China that is probably the most dexterous, agile robot that I've ever seen. This is a robot that could be in our households very soon. It can do incredible household tasks. Enough talk, let me show you the demo video. So now I want to walk you through a few things that I noticed while watching this video. First of all, it is in complete real time, 1x. Now look how fast it's able to stack these cups. Look how quickly it moves. Look how precise its body movements are. It's really absolutely incredible to watch. And now it's going to pull out a table sheet from a stack of wine glasses. Really, really good. And not only that, it seems to have large language models built into it. So right here you can see, how would you separate the items to tidy up the table? It is immediately able to read each item on the table, label it with what looks like a confidence score. Maybe it's the size, I'm not actually sure what these numbers are. And then it responds back, container for toys and then it starts putting it all together. And it says no teleoperation. This is not controlled by anybody else. This is purely artificial intelligence doing this. So its dexterity, its ability to pick up tiny items, gently close the drawer, really it's stuff that I haven't seen robots be able to do so far. And now the most mind blowing one, the precision necessary to cut the skin off of a cucumber without just completely demolishing the actual cucumber is incredibly impressive. 
And again, this is all done with neural nets. Okay, now he's preparing some veggies, able to flip a piece of bread in a pan. Unreal, this is unbelievable. Now, why is this so unbelievable? For those of you who are probably thinking, well, it's pretty cool, but humans can do this. And I've seen robots do incredible things. Well, here's the thing. Artificial intelligence is good at a lot of things. And robots are good at certain things but they're really bad at other things. And a great example is what Elon Musk said a few years ago. Basically, he over-automated his factory. He tried to add robots to every single step of the factory process to build the Tesla cars. And what he found is the most simple tasks for a human were actually really difficult for a robot. And the example he used was, connecting one wire to another, something that literally we teach two-year-olds to do. But robots find that incredibly difficult. Something about spatial awareness, something about depth, that is really difficult. Now, taking a really heavy object and placing it in a position, that seems to be much easier. And especially if the hardware they are putting that object on is in a fixed position. So this is really mind-blowing stuff to me. And again, look at the folding. It really takes such dexterity to fold this properly. Gentleness and precision of movement. And I, I, it's just, it's unbelievable to me that it can not only have strength to hammer, but it's gentle enough to take care of household tasks. And now for the one that I thought it couldn't do, simply plugging in a wire into a wall socket. So now we're gonna see it learn from human examples. And again, this is no teleoperation. This is simply it looking at a human and copying the human's movements. And it looks like it has a bunch of parts that it can put on. So in this example, it has hands, but in the other example, it had claws. Very cool. And I've seen stuff like this before where robots draw or make paintings, write letters, still incredibly impressive, but I've seen a little bit like that before. But that's not the only robot I want to show you today. It seems like every day I'm coming across new incredible robot videos and I collect them all for videos like this. So now let me show you one out of Google DeepMind. Now the robots themselves don't look as impressive as let's say X1 or even the robot that we just saw. But what really makes this special is its seeming ability to be able to really play the game of soccer against the other robot in what looks to be a very human-like manner. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so it's not as fluid of motion as other robots that we've seen, like the Boston Dynamics robot, but it's still really impressive. It moves around on two legs, it's able to kick the ball. If it falls, it gets right back up. So very cool. But speaking of Boston Dynamics, remember that robot from about a week ago, the Atlas, the new version of the Atlas, where it went from a completely lying flat position to vertical by just moving its legs in a really awkward manner, but it really looked cool? Well, it turns out other robot companies didn't think that was too difficult. And in fact, they were able to replicate it easily. Let's take a look. So here we see a very similar robot laying on the ground it folds its legs over and just stands right up. And this is from a company called Booster Robotics. And so yeah, they pretty much did the exact same thing. Now granted, it's not as fluid and it does not look as cool as the Boston Dynamics Atlas robot, but they were able to do it as well. So very, very cool. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Bright Data. When it comes to web scraping and data collection, you really only have two options. You can do it yourself or you can find a company to do it for you. To collect my own data through web scraping, I'd need a lot of IP addresses. I'd need to write my own tools. I'd use web unblocking tools and I'd have to write everything from scratch using Playwright or Puppeteer. And that is very time consuming as you've seen in previous videos. And so that's where Bright Data comes in. You could do both web scraping and gathering fresh data sets. Bright Data allows you to go in and request a custom data set, or you can choose from their marketplace of predefined, already ready to go data sets. 
And as we've talked about a bunch of times on this channel, AI is only as good as the data that you give it. And what really sets Bright Data apart is how fresh and reliable their data sets are. And if you go with their customized data option, you save money by saving time and preventing getting inaccurate or unnecessary data. So if you want the easiest and most reliable way of getting high quality data sets, check out Bright Data. I'll drop the links in the description below. Sign up today, you get $15 in free credits. And thanks again to Bright Data for sponsoring this video. And not to be left out, Unitree, which I believe is another Chinese company, has been releasing incredible robot videos lately, and they have a bunch of robots in the field. Here is the Unitree Group morning workout. Let's take a look. Let's keep going with Unitree. Here is the H1 Evolution V4, which is able to do backflips easily. Let's take a look. And here's another robot out of UC San Diego, Shanghai University, and Fudan University. And this one has a paper associated with it and a bunch of cool demo videos. So instead of playing them all, I'm just gonna grab highlights from each video and play them right now for you. And this person, Xiaolong Wang, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right, said, I have been cleaning my daughter's mess for more than two years now. Last weekend, a robot came to home to do the job for me. So it is not that far-fetched to think we're gonna have robots that clean up after us. And of course, I want that. And by the way, do you remember this robot from the Star Wars movie, the one that kind of rolled into position and then opened up? Well, it seems we're not far from that either. Let's take a look at this robot. Check this out. This is a robot that runs on one wheel. It's out of Illinois ECE, and it's a monocycle robot with a hybrid leg wheel mechanism mechanism enabling it to tackle diverse terrains. And last, we have a robot out of a company that I had not heard of called Sanctuary AI. Brand new robot, they're just announcing it. So let's take a look at this video, enjoy.
So that's it. Robots are in our very near future. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.